following program is classified G. It's suitable for all ages. We would like to remind our viewers that the views expressed in this program by our participating guests are solely viewpoints of them who take part and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verana Media Network. Hello and welcome to Gen XYZ. This is a program where we bring to you topics or contemporary issues faced by the youth. And now 2022 has already begun and I'm pretty sure that all of us are looking for something better this year. Now today on this program we will be actually discussing about women engagement in politics. Now significantly the engagement of women in politics in Sri Lanka are significantly low compared to other countries and that's because the women here are facing some challenges or barriers I would say that needs to be gapped sorry needs to be bridged and to discuss on this topic it's my pleasure to invite Lihini Fernando, who is also an attorney at law at profession and she is representing the municipal council at Muratua and she is also an advocate for change and also she talks about talks against injustice. And ma'am, you're not a new face on this show and thank you once again for joining thank me you. on the show. Thank you for having me and it's a pleasure to be in discussion with you on the new year. Yes, happy new year to you, you too ma'am. Right to start off this discussion, I would like to get your intake on the current representation of women we have right now in the Sri Lankan parliament and even the little representation that we have right now, do you think they are able to make a significant difference in the political world? So to start off, women in Sri Lanka uh, is 52% of the population, 51.8% of the population. And if you take the water percentage, it's close to about uh, 56% of the population so by and then if you look at the representation of women in parliament it's close to about uh, 5.6 percent that is out of 12 uh, un, out of 225 only 12 are represented so is this uh, figure enough for a 52 percent representation is a question that which we need to ask so personally i think the women's voice is not heard not given enough a prominence and significance in parliament and also in decision making as places now i represent i come from the local council so local council there we have 21 percent of women representation that was also introduced with the 25 percent quota that was brought in at the 2018 uh, uh, local council elections so overall looking at how the women representation in politics has unfolded in sri lanka i would say it is not at a satisfactory position simply because uh, though we claim uh, with pride that we had the first prime minister, uh, female prime minister and then we had the first uh, female president uh, in Sri Lanka. Uh, but uh, throughout the years, I don't think significant uh, decisions, ha changes have taken place to increase uh, women's representation in politics until 2016, until the legislation was brought in. So uh, if you look at this in totality, um, I would say this should at least be about 40% representation if you compare the region like to countries like India, Sri Lanka, Malaysia, uh, in Mold even in Maldives, like you see women taking center stage. Now, uh, why I say this is it's not just because, uh, because it, they're being women, but there's a certain uh, set of social issues, social concerns that are related to women and they're also a significant part of the population and they should also be acknowledged in decision making forums. So it is I think a right in a different sense uh, and it's also a recognition given to women. But uh, I would say here in Sri Lanka the political culture is predominantly male dominant. So it is the men even who decides whether women should be in politics and what percentage of women should take center stage. So it is like, you know, it's like women fighting for their place and asking the men to give us their right. So I think uh, 20 come 2022, we are in a position that we need to acknowledge the fact that women needs to be in decision making and, it, and that pr 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 position should be given irrespective of uh, any debate or argument. So I think, you know, I would personally like to see about 40% representation in 
in parliament and in decision making spheres for women. All right, ma'am. So, do you think that this is the same case in Western countries also? But because this problem occurs, I feel in most Asian countries. Is it the same with the Western countries? No, West you see much more stronger women representation and women. It's uh, the the whole uh, sex factor, whether you are a woman or man. Uh, you know that that barrier is far more lesser. Uh, but here, I would say, uh, when it comes to women, like the political culture in Sri Lanka is designed in such such a manner that it is somewhat difficult for a woman to also be engaged in politics because you see politics in Sri Lanka is not a profession politics is like a lifestyle so you will see the politics that is done uh, but the party politics you are expected to work with the people 24 7 like you know to go to their funerals to go to their functions to be rep rep represented so who is a politician today I, I, technically, a politician sitting in parliament is a legislator. He should contribute towards the development of the legislature, towards policy making. But we don't see that. We see them in their electorate with their constituents. So, are we? Is this the right way to go ahead? And then we say, you know, we have wrong representation, and you know, the right people are not representing. So, the the, the political culture is designed in such a way that uh, the politician today. Uh, is not the politician that is expected to be. So women are doing politics in such an environment. So women are also expected to do politics the way men does politics, which is difficult. Because I would say now, I being uh, a, a, a lawyer, a mother, an entrepreneur, I mean there are a lot of roles that we play. And whilst doing that, we do politics. But whereas you, you, women have to balance all these roles, uh, plus, you know, uh, I mean, there are certain social obligations that are wasted on a woman. You have to do all these things whilst engaging politics. But the scenario for a man is different. So this is one of the challenges. So I think, you know, collectively to increase women representation in politics, the way women are expected to do politics should also change. And that must come from the parties, I would say, how the parties view a role of a woman in politics. I would really like to get your intake on how you join politics as well, <laughs> ma'am, but at the latter part of the interview. Sure. What do you think are the main challenges right now that the women are facing or the barriers that they are facing in order to get themselves into politics in terms of acceptance or culture per se? So, uh, first point is uh, you have to be with the party and the party needs to be willing to give you nominations. So, what are the first things they ask you? You can, can you, when you come for an election, do you have the spending capacity? It's not about whether you're good, whether you're cultured, whether you're educated. It's about having money. So does women have the money? Uh, there are no campaign financing regulations in Sri Lanka. And I, I want to say this, that I'm a strong advocate of campaign financing regulations in Sri Lanka. And I think that needs to come in before the very next election on how these fa finances that are spent in uh, elections are actually uh, legalized and regularized. So that, that needs to come in. So if that is brought in, I think uh, there will be somewhat of a level playing field and a pathway will open for more women and youth also to take center stage. So uh, what are, as answering your question, the challenges that women face is again the finances. Do they have the necessary money to run? Then also, as I said earlier, they have to play multiple roles whilst engaging in politics. Uh, so that is a different challenge. And also I would say the acceptance for women. Uh, now, one of the questions that men, a lot of men ask is, you know, can they do politics? Are they capable? Do they understand? Uh, so now, uh, we see in local councils there are 21% of representation of women. So there are many instances where they say they did a wrong decision by bringing women to politics. So we, we also can say, you know, it's a wrong decision by bringing men to politics. Have they also fulfilled their duties? So it, it's just this whole, you know, how the society accepts a woman in politics, the perception also needs to change to a larger extent. Uh, also, the voter also must understand that, you know, women should be a part of politics and their voices need to be heard. So it's not about the muscle power and the grit to be a leader, but it's about leading with empathy, leading with honesty, leading, uh, leading uh, in the right direction. So these are the things that women bring to the table. So, all in all, per se, the political environment in Sri Lanka is challenging. It is not easy for a woman, or I would say for anyone to survive here. So, a woman coming into politics must understand all these scenarios and be willing uh, to take that challenge. But, uh, and uh, 
in politics it's not an environment where anyone will support you it's just that you need to have the guts and the grit to go forward so yes the your parties will support you but you know it's it's dif it's different it's more or less it's not about collectively rising it's about individually how do i succeed so this is the culture in sri lanka so i mean all in all i think uh, women who are in politics has a bigger role uh, to uh, be sort of role models i would say to show that difference that the difference that they bring into the table that you know collectively we will rise together right now when talking about acceptance and the culture also you mentioned uh, do you think there was a significant difference compared to the past few years do you see a change now yeah i would say if i if i talk about where i i come from the local councils there has been more women representation in politics certainly and women do talk about cer certain issues they have highlighted and their approach of doing politics is different so you know they they do challenge men to a men to a certain extent and also when it comes to corruption taking bribes and all of that uh, i i i i can say that you know women women are not there it's not easy easy to bribe a woman so because they are they speak against injustice uh, all that and you know they 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 stand for something that they believe so you know so they to an extent have managed to kind of uh, bring that change but it's only been about how many years 2018 up until now so i think if uh, more and more women are brought in given the opportunity to take center stage i think that will be a changing point in politics in sri lanka right ma'am now this stigma created around women do, how deep rooted do you think that the stigma has gone into and do you think the stigma is stemmed by other women itself or just by patriarchy there is a stigma i would say there one one factor is uh, people think can women do politics that is one factor and uh, accepting women as uh, being able to take uh, positions in decision making is another factor women talk only of women is women's issues no women can talk about economics women can talk about law on policy but uh, are women even uh, called for such discussions so i think and also if you take media time air time uh, if you it's always male dominant they are, can a, uh, why why not invite a woman if there are four panelists why not one be a woman so these kind of things uh, need to come into play uh, if you uh, so th these are the things answering your question again uh, sorry your question was about the stigma do you think uh, women and women stem this or is it just about patriarchy yeah so and also i would say in politics there are a lot of insecurities as well so insecurity is in terms of uh, recognizing uh, the value of a woman uh, so this is also uh, comes from women also uh, to a larger extent because the ability to accept that a woman is capable and that a woman uh, has the education the knowledge to contribute so i think you know uh, women also must support women women also must acknowledge that their peers are also uh, qualified and educated and that they do the right thing so as i said earlier it must be an approach where together you will rise not i will trample you and you know i will go my way you will go your way i think as a country if you take we don't have that approach it's even in politics it's about you know how do i how do i make my way it's not about that we must you know do the right thing uh, govern with honesty integrity and together we rise that is i think uh, Sri Lanka needs to and especially political leaders right around in every party needs to bring into the table leading with honesty integrity and together we will rise what can you say ma'am about the support that women give women right now so if i if i may comment uh, from where in our local councils we do support women Uh, we do support women in terms of uh, policy levels in terms of discussion and also uh, there's a lot of harassment that comes happens to women i think this is a important thing like if you take local councils uh, there's a lot of uh, the environment is not a very conducive and happy environment i mean people see only what happens in parliament but the situation in local councils are far more different i mean it's it's very uh, it's very raw the language is very raw the 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 insults the verbatim the uh, the gestures that are used and especially for women it is not an easy easy environment and we see uh, and but women do support women i can say in our councils when certain injustices happen to women women together support so that 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 uh, understanding is there 
So I think you know even in parliament it is there, we see there is a very good women's caucus where they, they have come together on common issues where they work. So they are, when it comes to that there is consensus, but it is just that they, they how, how they are perceived by the men, how when they take forward a proposal will the men accept it is also a question. And one of the other things I want to say is to increase women representation there is a role that a man also must play. It is not just about women fighting for, for their position, but men also must acknowledge the fact that women are capable. So, it should be a, a, a thing together. It is not just about women, you know, single handedly fighting for their rights. All right. Thank you, ma'am. I think we will have to hold your thought on that yeah. and we will be back again. Let us go into a short commercial break. You are watching Gen XYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ and we are in discussion with Lihini Fernando and on the topic of women in politics. Ma'am, I think in the first segment you gave a very good idea about the challenges that women are facing right now and where Sri Lanka stands in terms of empowering women in politics. Something that you mentioned was the political world is different to what we see externally but internally there are so many challenges and it's a different world out there. Do you think the problems also faced by women in the corporate world are somewhat different to the problems they are facing in the political world? So, <coughs> if I may say, there are underlying problems for women, social issues, uh, say for example, harassment, sexual harassment, violence. So, these kind of things then verbal abuse, cyber abuse, so things like this are common. Uh, but uh, political environment I would say is far more toxic, unregulated, driven by emotion, driven by uh, agendas, whereas in a, a corporate world probably uh, there is a more policy framework at least on the outset of it and uh, you know it is more, more you are designated and you are provided a role, the given a role. But then uh, sexual harassments, verbal abuse, all of that happens in both sectors. But uh, in politics, uh, it is different uh, because it is not a, it is not an environment. I would say a normal, not a normal. No, it's a, it's a different environment uh, where you will not see anybody willing or wanting to come and enter, uh, as opposed to going and doing a job. So again, I said in my previous segment that politics should be a profession as opposed to being a lifestyle. Now, uh, politics not being a profession uh, is also one of the reasons why many do not want to come into this also. It is more like uh, welfare politics, the ability of having a lot of money, the ability to give away things as freebies to people, you know, the availability of time uh, with unregulated time. So, these are the things that govern a, a role of a politician. So, the, if you are to become a politician in this country, you should be able to fit into this framework. Whereas, you know, if you are in the corporate sector, you know, you can, you can uh, be a de provide, have a designated role, do your job and come back. But in politics, is far more different. So, anybody coming into politics must also have that mindset that, you know, uh, this is not an environment like that, but nevertheless willing to take the challenge. So, it is different and that is why you know we do not see many educated people coming into politics because the political system is not designed uh, to capture an educated person coming and also if you take income levels, social earning levels, uh, the earnings of politicians are you know the regulated earnings are far lesser. So, that is why you see corruption because now if you take our salaries at the council, it is on salaries, it is just the allowance that is given, but the allowance that is given is far more not, 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 not enough for a person to survive. So, because of that you see enormous corruption at the local council level, where they, where they rob from even from the garbage trucks to you know uh, uh, passing of survey plans to everything, there is corruption in this country one of the reasons. So, I would say if you are to attract uh, certain people to politics, this, this the whole system needs a complete overhaul. Uh, Ma'am, you said that there is a huge challenge that needs to be accepted and uh, women need to face if they are coming into the political world. Yeah. Do you think personally that we have strong women out there who can 
come into the world of politics? Most definitely. I think the, we, we have some very good women in this country. And you know, women uh, in Sri Lanka are very strong. I mean, they play multiple roles. And we are not operating in a very regulated environment. I mean, our structures, our systems are not, uh, not uh, governed in a regulated manner. Still, for all women uh, go through all these things, yet overcome many challenges. And there are women who have uh, excelled the corporate world. There are women who have taken say, center stage in international Sri Lankan women. So I mean, uh, there there is uh, uh, there is uh, good Sri Lankan women uh, that can come into politics, and I think they must come into politics. It what? is important in 2022 that we pave way for uh, women in politics and uh, and I think it's women should open doors to bring in more women to politics also. So the, I, as I said earlier, we need to create the different culture and define what a role, a woman's role in politics is. In terms of opening doors to the young women out there, what advantages do you think that these young women can bring into the country if they join politics and what are the advantages that these women can gain by joining the political political world? So I would say uh, uh, how a woman will approach a problem will be different to how a man will approach a problem. Most definitely. So uh, I mean uh, something that I see is there are a lot of issues uh, that are not being discussed but are not, not taken center stage. For example, I'll take issues related to women, things like domestic domestic violence, then things like uh, having proper daycare facilities, having uh, me me the mental health, then social uh, s social security needs, uh, then sexual harassment, cyber crime. So things like these topics, you know, are, I would say I are the back burner. And even if they uh, they don't see that these things are solving social issues in Sri Lanka are as important. The, you think development is measured by infrastructural development. Nobody considers uh, social development, a happy family, a happy woman, a happy child as development. So these kind of issues, women, if women are there, women will talk about it. Women will work on these issues. And I would say a manner in which a woman governs is far different. They're, they'll bring an empath, empathetic approach to a problem. Uh, uh, and not they, they will not have a tunnel vision, but they will be able to look at things in a broader perspective and bring in a holistic uh, solution to a problem. So this is the difference that a woman will bring into the table. And you know that it is time that we accept that you know there are different ways of resolving problems. Which I think you know it's like here we in Sri Lanka what we have seen over the years is men taking center stage one way of governance you know a leader he should be you know strong arm gritted you know wearing all that you know that that mascu masculine personality. No. There are different, there's, there's a different way of governing. You can govern with empathy, you can govern with love, and yet you can be stronger, you, yet you can be assertive, yet you can be forceful. So we need leaders of that nature. Leaders who will uh, lead with honesty and integrity and who will be principle centric, who will govern in a democratic framework, who will adhere to the law, who will acknowledge the law, not violate the law. So these are some of the things that I think, you know, I, we see women talking, these are some of the things that women can bring into the table if they are being given uh, their due place. And what are some of the advantages that young women can gain by joining into the world of politics? I would say more than gaining advantages, the women can give in a lot rather than coming. I don't think, you know, Sri Lanka is not at a position where, you know, uh, we can gain advantage, we are in, a, in our economy is shrinking. Uh, if you take uh, Sri Lanka culturally, we, are, we have gone down our education policies to our health policies to if you look at the present economic situation in Sri Lanka and how what in, uh, what uh, in falls in 2022 is not a, not a happy place. So I think rather than gaining, uh, we would say, you know, it's a time of giving and it's a, it's a time I think uh, where many educated, honest people I think need to come forward for the sake of the country. It is not easy. I will, I will be considering my personal experience. I can say it is not easy. But if you have some love for your country and if you want to build that uh, future for your country and for your children, I think now is the time to come forward. And I want to make an appeal to the young who are watching this. Uh, rather than putting yourself, my, myself first, Let's, let's think of the country a little bit and if you are educated, it's time to give back to the country now right. or never, I would say. Of course, I would t totally agree with you on that, ma'am. Also, you are also an entrepreneur as well and you own a company of Willux Partners yeah. and it's a law firm. 
what are some of the initiatives that you have taken in order to give priority to women to engage in politics? So uh, my law firm is completely uh, female driven. Not that I'm, uh, uh, not that I don't want to engage men or anything like that. But it was uh, started by females, and you know, uh, we work and we give opportunities. It's a very equal opportunity employer, uh, and uh, you know, where we focus on work, and work is the primary factor. Nothing about you know personalities or personal. You know, it, it doesn't determine. You work hard, and you you have the ability to rise, and uh, it's the same way with my other, other entities that I'm involved uh, uh, where we facilitate to over uh, provide employment to over 100 employees within our group of networks uh, so where we want to encourage more young people to take stand, center stage in contributing towards the economy so uh, rather than I would say uh, you know we talk but it's better to lead with examples that's what I've been trying to do yeah of course and what do you think that other firms also can do in order to encourage this engagement so of I, young women? I think uh, that's a good question. If you take uh, employment in Sri Lanka, uh, women participation in employment is about 35 percent. But if you take university education, it's about 54 percent. So majority of the women that uh, get educated are not contributing that to the economy. Uh, we see the, one of the main reasons being women have to, you know, take care of their families. And a lot of women, after being educated, after doing their job, once they have children, they retire. Uh, they, I mean, they take a back step and they stay back to look after the children. So the country has not built that supportive system to enable a woman to work. Uh, so, I mean, if you take our regulations, uh, there are no work from home regulations that are brought in. How, how will you uh, value a home care worker? Like a mother, a mother looking after the children, there is a value to it. Where is it factored in? So these, these things are not uh, spoken of. And also Sri Lanka doesn't have proper daycare facilities, child care facilities. They are not regulated. If you take uh, nurseries, uh, all of that, they are not regulated. So uh, these, are the, these are things that needs to come in, you know, if, if proper social security, uh, if proper daycare facilities can be built in, uh, where, the, where mothers can have assurance to leave their children and go, uh, I think women will be able to contribute uh, far more to the uh, to the economy and also the ability, also providing uh, flexible working hours. So I think our work regulations, the labor laws, also in line with all this must change. Does this apply to the political world as well? Yeah, political as in uh, these systems that needs to be changed. Is it just in the employment sec uh, sector? No, as I said, I think in politics, if you you need to bring in regulations to. Uh, uh, to increase women representation in politics, I would say at least at provincial councils next elections, you must make sure that there's at least 40% women representation and all not just about giving nominations, but even in the national list, you, you need to give that place to, to the woman. And I think it's not just about uh, we women talking about it, uh, parties need to acknowledge because the final decision making uh, is that nominations board, is that party leaders, the party leaders must acknowledge this and I want to say the party that I represent uh, takes uh, women representation very seriously and has pledged to give women 25% and also SPI has uh, launched a women's charter and in an in a event uh, they are in power they will ensure that the rights of the women are secured. So same way I think all parties must bring this to the center stage and you know give that position due place to the woman. Ma'am, what can you say about the education, the awareness of politics towards women? Do you think that uh, the prominence is given enough for making the political situation uh, aware? So, uh, Sri Lanka, there is uh, there is no formal uh, political academies yes. uh, that uh, provide political training. You have political science in university. There are art students who graduate. Then there is interest in politics. But there is no like you know you don't say you have to pass this course. You have to do this. Uh, you have to have uh, you have to have a basic fundamental knowledge in law, in governance, in administration, in finance for you to be a politician. So I think uh, these kind of things need to come in place. Political training. Uh, prior to being a politician but uh, you know here in Sri Lanka what are the factors that determine your nomination it's about how much money you have how much influence you have how many people you know uh, are you able to you know uh, I mean if there's a political meeting can you bring thousand people and come so these are the factors that decide your capability to be a politician so I think you know time has evolved for us to take a clean slate approach towards politics in Sri Lanka I would say
All right, I think in the next segment, I would really like to take your intake also about the journey uh, with you in politics as well. But before that, we'll go into a short commercial break. You're watching GenXYZ. Welcome back to Gen XYZ. This is our final segment and we are in discussion with uh, Ms. Lihini Fernando. And I think in the first two segments, ma'am, you gave a very good idea about the challenges that women are facing and what Sri Lanka can do as a whole and what firms can do in order to empower women in joining politics as well. Now, coming to your personal life, ma'am, you joined politics as a first generation politician mm. and that's a big step. And how did your parents react to this at first and how are they reacting to it now? So, uh, it, I, it was in 2018 that I came into politics. They brought in, as I said, the 25% quota. And uh, I always, I was a person who always spoke against injustice in society and stood up for the wrong things. So, and the politics, uh, I liked politics. I used to talk about politics, uh, discuss. And then I, I, I thought when they brought in 25%, why not, uh, why not go into it? Uh, because I mean, if you, are, if you are a person who advocates for change, it's not just about talking. If you, if you believe in change, be the change. So well, that was one of the reasons uh, that I decided. But then again, I had support from my husband. If he, if he didn't support and if he was not open-minded, uh, I don't think I will be able to even continue today uh, because I have a small son and then, you know, we play multiple roles. So he needs to uh, be able to fit in to uh, and exactly. uh, whenever I'm not there to fit in the gap. So we have that understanding. And But however, when I got into politics uh, back in 2018, uh, there were a lot of resentment that came from different people. They were like, you know, why do you want to go in? It's a hell hole. It's not a place for an educated person. It is not a. Uh, it's a different social system. It is a different social class. I said yes. Obviously, I, I knew all that. But nevertheless, somebody needs to take the first step. And I'm I'm happy to say that after uh, coming into politics, uh, there are many in within our social circles now who discusses of politics. And there are many people who have approached me saying that they too want to come into politics. So I believe maybe we would have done something right to you know inspire and influence uh, other women. Uh, so this is what I think is important. You know, if you if you come into it, you must bring a few people along with you. Uh, if you want to be the change, you don't just be the change, but together you will be the change. So that is that is the thinking that one needs to bring in. And also, um, politics is not an easy place to survive because, as I said, it is a very cutthroat environment. But uh, do the right thing. Uh, believe in certain principles. I mean, I have certain values that I believe in. I mean, there were certain ways that I was raised with. So, I mean, values that I bring in. So, I mean, that is what I continue. It is not, I, I don't want to put in a different face just because I'm in politics. What you see me is who I am. That, uh, that integrity one needs to bring in. So this is the culture that we need to create in this country. I would say uh, there are a lot of fakeness. I mean, in social media, you see a lot of fake. It's a different lifestyle that you live, but your reality is far more different. But, you know, I think uh, it's time that uh, we create an environment where we have leaders, we have people. Uh, who live that, uh, who bring that difference. And that's what I try, but uh, I don't know how far I'm successful, but uh, I try, I keep trying. I mean, we fall, but we'll, we still get up and we try and continue. That's a very inspirational story, ma'am. And what were some of the challenges that you faced? Did you expect it the way it was to be? What was the support you received from people? Was it difficult for you when you started uh, so, in the political uh, when, world? When I ran in for 2018 elections, uh, I was I didn't want to paste posters. I, that was one thing. I'm 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 an env I, I res uh, love the environment, so I didn't believe in you know pasting posters. So my entire campaign, it was a poster-free campaign, and I was quite blamed by our party hierarchy also saying, you know, look, you're a new person. How will people know you? But I went from house to house, campaigned, and you know, it was hard. Maybe you know, there, there are positives and negatives, but you know, it took the challenge. And then, uh, so that is something that I believe in. If I run for next elections again, I, I, I hope that I don't want, I don't want to do this. So that is, you know, if you believe in some change, you must uh, stand for it. And also, uh, something that I want to uh, make it, uh, make it uh, do is. Uh, uh, about this whole being transparent, being accountable, 
you know, declaring your asset declarations to be made public, uh, you know, campaign financing regulations. So these kind of things need to be brought in. I mean, in terms of transparency, when it comes to political campaigning, these kind of things, I think the younger generation, young people in politics, this is a difference that I think they should bring in. What kind of support, ma'am, did you receive from uh, your colleagues that you work with in the political world? So when I came into office, when I was running, there were a lot of friends of mine who came to campaign with me and they came and, you know, they were too also excited that, you know, somebody of theirs were running. So there were a lot of young people who ran my campaign with me, who came uh, to go door to door, who supported. So that was the difference and it was a very fresh campaign of uh, novelty that was brought in. So it was an interesting and exciting time, uh, but uh, it was not easy because I was uh, fighting. I was running with a very experienced uh, politician who was one person who was, was been in office for the, for ten years from the opposing party. So it was not easy, but I think I did a decent campaign, and here I am today. Of course. Now, ma'am, you are a mother. You are a wife. You are juggling so many things at the same time yeah. with work and personal life as well. Has it been challenging? It is challenging. I won't say it's not easy. It's not easy because you play. I play multiple roles. I run my own uh, business and plus doing council work to managing my role as a wife and a mother. So uh, it is not easy. And uh, if I was running at uh, 40 kilometers per hour, now I probably would be going about 90 kilometers <laughs> per hour. But then you know. Uh, but it's doable. It's, I think it's a lot to do with uh, your personality and your mindset. If you, if you have that, if you believe in something, you will work for it. So that is one of the things that, that the younger generation must believe in something and work for it. I mean, if you, you're working hard and also working smart. Uh, those are the things, those, and also to work with technology. I'm, I'm, I'm a very tech, tech person and you know how to make myself efficient, organized. So these are things that will help you uh, get somewhere. Of course. Has there been a time where you had to prioritize one thing over the other, work or personal life? Yeah, there are. There have been instances where, you know, but then at that, at that time, there I have, uh, thankfully, I have a good support system. Because of that support system, I mean, my mother, my husband, there's, there's a good support system. So because of them, uh, I'm able to do this. And I want to say this about, since we talk about women in politics, I think there's a role that men also has to play. If the, if there are men, if the, if the men realize that there are women, our potential, I think men must give the women the opportunity. I'm not saying give the, op nobody needs to give anybody the opportunity, but acknowledge the fact and support. Because we are in a, we are in a society, we are in a society that uh, men and women must collectively work. It's not about, you know, uh, a, a, a woman playing her conventional roles while the man doing his part. But it's about, you know, going, journeying together. So if, uh, if men can, uh, I mean, respect and support women in a, in a, in a much bigger way, then me, women will be able to uh, take uh, center stage. So it doesn't mean that, you know, uh, what I'm saying is if, this, if the system was in place, uh, it would be far easier. But here it is not. So I think you know that collectively, if they can work together, I think many women can take uh, their way to politics. Of course, this stigma, ma'am, that they say that women have to be married, they have to have children in order to be called a real woman. Oh. Do you think this stigma is still there compared to the previous years, or do you think it has decreased? Oh no, it is there because if you really look at, uh, I mean, grassroots levels that we work in. You know, it's all about at what age you get married. Uh, if you are not married, uh, you are being labelled by society. You know, there is no, uh, there is no respect for individualism. Uh, I mean, uh, these are the, these are social issues in country. They also uh, a lot to do with the culture. Also, I mean, how we pers and uh, these things start from school, from the education level, uh, education as well. So our education system also must be geared to such an extent to change the mindset of how people think. I think uh, we need to evolve with time. In, evolve with time and ex respect people's individuality, be it the gender, be it the race, be your beliefs, be your values. Uh, instead of labeling people, but respect, respect another human being for who they are. All right. I think we are coming to the end of our program as well. As my final yeah. question, ma'am, what can you say to the young women out there and encourage them an aspirational a message that you can tell them in order to be engaged in politics? So I would say politics is not an easy journey, but it is doable. You need, one needs to believe in oneself 
and also build your support systems, build your support structures and I encourage many to come forward and you know people like us are always willing to support and give an assistance to, uh, to the women who want to come in. Uh, if, you if somebody believes in something, it is time to make it a reality. If you believe in change, be the change. Change is not easy, but I think we are in a situation that the country needs more, more good, formidable, honest people to take center stage. So, uh, youth uh, watching this, women watching this, my simple message to you is, you know, Sri Lanka is not a bad country. Sri Lanka is the country that we were born in. It's a country that is pledged with so many natural resources. But I don't think, fortunately, we were governed by the right leaders. So, it is time that we become the right leaders, lead with example, lead by inspiring others. Instead of expecting uh, your leaders to do the right thing, let us us contribute our way. So, if we walk the talk, then others will also follow. I think that is my message to everybody uh, and wishing everyone a good 2022 and hope uh, Sri Lanka will be a prosperous nation and that our youth and the younger generation will remain in this country and be hopeful and we will rise one day. Wow, that was really an inspirational message that you gave, ma'am. Again, thank you very much for joining with us on Gen XYZ. It was my pleasure to having you as well. And I thank wish you, you all the very best. Thank you. and pleasure to be in discussion with you. It was an interesting conversation. Thank you. And that was our program on Gen XYZ. Just in case you couldn't watch this on air, you can always re-watch this on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash English. We will again be back next week with another contemporary topic or issues relating the youth. I'm Suzanne until then stay safe and have a good night.